week at 10 p.m. BBC Two. <laughs> Welcome to this special edition of Mock the Week. We're returning with some brand new shows in September. So tonight we look back on the series so far and celebrate some of our favourite moments, a few outtakes and the best material we couldn't fit in the first time around. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Lovely, I'll be in my trailer. Uh, <laughs> in other news, what's going on here? Deal or no deal, reveal the identity <laughs> of the banker. The banker is Boris. The banker is Boris. It's not that, actually. Uh, yeah. It's Boris Johnson. He's actually on a sex line. Yes, I'm oiling myself up. <laughs> Say, that is the worst phone sex operator I've ever <laughs> used. Don't get me wrong. We got there. <laughs> is, saying, is, Boris, is Boris just going, I don't believe it. It's magic. They're not in the room, but I can hear them. <laughs> He's in fact going, I want to speak to the mayor of London. What do you mean it's engaged? <laughs> It's much more likely to be going, the Olympics, 2012? Shit, I thought it was 2020. <laughs> is he saying, hello, is that Durex? I want to complain. <laughs> is, he, is, he saying, is he saying, of course the baby looks like me. All babies look like me. <laughs> I've got a lot of paternity cases like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually going, I love the music they play when you're on hold. My milkshake rings on a boy's ear. <laughs> Is he, saying, was he in fact put his hand over one ear? Because he's worried it'll go in one ear. <laughs> What is, what, is it, what is the story? The story is the most fantastic story of the week is that Boris has allegedly fathered a love child and the reason the papers have given is because a posh lady he knows has a baby who looks like Boris. As Ed pointed out, all babies look like <laughs> Boris. If Boris put a nappy on and rocked up to an orphanage, he could get breastfed. That's how much he looks like a baby. And now all the papers have done is put an image of Boris Johnson having sex into my mind. Oh. All I can think about is him talking dirty. Can you imagine that? Madam, your udders are as magnificent as Cicero's oratory. Yeah. That's all you can say. <laughs> Because ladies aren't that attractive. At least Blunkett had an excuse. <laughs> imagine, imagine the noise Boris makes at the point of orgasm. My God, it must sound like someone's thrown a theosaurus into a blender. Just <laughs> flabbity jungle wobbly goobly. <laughs> How did South Africa been perceived around the world? Now? Yes, yeah. I mean, I think everybody's taken to the Vuvuzela. 50,000 of them have sold here. Yeah, we love it. We're oh, loving yeah, the yeah, Vuvuzela. Love it. Yeah, excuse you, me. You, you, you've played a blinder there. If I can just say yeah. on behalf of the world, and well done on the Vuvuzela. There are positive aspects. There are. This is quite interesting, right? Nick, you give it a blow quickly. Hey. The Vuvuzela. Hey. Okay. Right. right now, Dara sounds like a sickly Lurpak man. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I like your nickname, but it sounds like a Wookiee having a tricky shit. <laughs> so, 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 so this noise, I'm sorry, I can't do it. You do, you do it, right? You, no, you, no, one more time. No, yeah, one more time. Did, should be followed by a hand solo going, ooh, give it a couple of minutes there. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Millennium Falcon told us just for a second or two. Like, there are positive aspects to the Vuvu Zola, being on, because people all over the world now realise how appalling it is to give a child a toy trumpet for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> my mate Dave reckons, t- direct quote from my mate Dave, you know them Vuvu Zellas? They're so loud they can kill a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> is that true? No, it's, it's not, it's oh, not true. Wouldn't that be an amazing oh, no. episode of Springwatch? But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what could, what could actually kill them is the Tutu Zella. Have you heard of it? What do you mean by Tutu Zella? No, the Tutu Zella is a reference to Bishop Desmond Tutu. He's actually, it's much higher, much higher pitch. If you listen to him, when he came on, he, what a wonderful occasion, and, and that actually, and then, and then he made a speech after where he said, what a wonderful say, uh, let us, uh, let us not forget, uh, let us not forget. I, I just forgot. I like that. that was, that was incredible. Please stop, you're scaring me. <laughs> tiny things that are great about the film, like Mick McCarthy's commentary is just oh, 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 Could he sound any more northern if he tried? Kick it! Twat it! Go on! <laughs> Nobble him! Have you seen the price at pies? Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Who's seen my ferret? Kick it! Kick him! 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, during the budget that he should actually have announced the budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. The money's run out. <laughs> Just how, like most, you know, ex-pros, they look after themselves. You know, Shearer still looks quite good. Mark Lorison, God bless him. Look at him, he's just melting in the chair. <laughs> he looks like someone's put Jabba the Hutt in a microwave, and I salute him. <laughs> and then, of course, just exquisite. I don't, I don't know, Gary. I couldn't care. I'm just <laughs> eating my weight in meat. <laughs> The Irish didn't make it through, did they? Because no. of Thierry Henry handballing. And I was hoping that England and France would actually make it through and at some stage meet in the World Cup, just because I would love to see the dilemma Irish people would have not knowing which country to support. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it, it's a um, tough one. It is. You know, I genuinely think I'd probably even go for France just for old time's sake. Yeah, out of the France. I mean, oh, listen, man. if you want to see That's the explosion, the it's French. incredible. Well, go on. well, what's amazing about it is an elk has been sent home for calling the French coach a son of a whore. <laughs> he didn't deny it. That was the incredible thing. That apparently, uh, an elk said, "Yeah, you're a son of a whore." And Dominic went, "Pardon me," which is an opportunity just to go. I said, "You're a terrible bore." <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you, son of a whore. I think it's a great... Yeah. I mean, there should be more, you know, pirate insults wandering around this national diplomacy. But the French have a brilliant insult, which is ta mère, right? What's because the equivalent of your, your mama. Your mama is this, <laughs> but they say ta mère. The great, we used to trade them in, in, in college because we, we discovered this, this font of fantastic French insults. Uh, ta mère est née dans un cadet, which means your mother was born in a trolley. That is... <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten exactly where it is. Your mother succeeded to her tights. Uh, it's my favourite all time French insults. They, just do, they do great your mother based insults. Uh, so. The French are not going to be. But I'm amazed that Dominic heard it because in every French film I've ever seen, you can't hear a word. <laughs> the insult would. He would simply have gone. You were the son of a woman. <laughs> Dominic would have gone. But surely, I would, I would like to think that the entire yeah, the entire French dressing room is quiet. in black and white. Would be yeah, the <laughs> <of> time. But, <laughs> ta mère, ta mère est tout Ah, j'entends, j'entends. Ah, a massive existential crisis in the middle. <laughs> but just innately cool. Yeah, right? yeah. And it doesn't matter how much you slag them off. You still buy their wine, their meats, their cheeses. They don't buy anything from here. They don't buy anything from anywhere. Oh, yeah, but they're only I would like a Finder's crispy pancake. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's not how they're going to say it. How are they going to say it? <laughs> the next round is called Between the Lines and features Hugh and Russell. Would you make your way to the press pit, please? Russell delivers a speech in the guise of a leading figure in the world stage while Hugh translates <clears throat> what they really mean. This week, Russell is David Cameron. Of course I am. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to say that this coalition will be a partnership of equals. Why no sugar, please, Nick? <laughs> I'm here to talk about real policies, not just popular slogans. These aren't just policies. These are meticulously crafted, <laughs> organic, deficit-cutting policies. I'm afraid it's time for some unpleasant cuts. There is no way I'm having another child. <laughs> the good news is we found oil just off the Falklands. The bad news is it's drifted there from the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> People say I'm just image. You fold that face over. People say I'm just image and spin, but you can see statement shit written all over my face. <laughs> it's important to stress I'm very familiar with the language and culture of young people. What's up? Hand down the hoodie. No. People say I can't relate to hoodies, but at school I was a real terrorway. <laughs> Yes, that was that time we spooned quints into matron's loafers. <laughs> In fact, no, I'm not proud to say it, I was once a gang member. Yes, no one messed with the Eton choristers. <laughs> I stopped doing that. Having visited America recently, I must say I've never met anyone like Barack Obama before. Well, I have, but normally they're wearing white gloves and serving me G&T. <laughs> Why has new Tory MP Mark Reckless been oh, in the news? Oh, oh this is, is fantastic. This and I know there's a delay, you probably haven't heard the same, but Tory MP Mark Reckless. Is he the His MP? actual name <laughs> is Mr Reckless. Is he, uh, <laughs> is he the representative in Parliament for all the Mr Men? <laughs> <laughs> And not pick Mr. Strong uh, or no. one of the dependable ones. Why would what, what he, he was so super glued his hands to his face? Is that that wasn't the recklessness in question. Oh, 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 he was, he 
basically, he was too drunk to actually vote in the House of Commons. This bloke, right, is a lawyer who used to be a banker, right? A lot of people hate drunks, they hate MPs, hate mm. conservatives, hate lawyers, mm. and hate bankers. This bloke is, in fact, all of them. <laughs> well, the lovely thing about this is, on his, on his website, and one of the questions was, why do you want to run for Parliament? And he said, because people in my constituency are fed up of being taken for granted and it's time that somebody stood up for them. <laughs> he had to be picked off the floor of the bar in the House of Commons <laughs> and dragged to a taxi. I think it's great. I see, at least he's living up to his name. Mark yeah. Reckless, he's acting reckless. It's really awkward. You only meet somebody who's got, like, a wacky name and they're quite shy. Like, what's your name? Troy Pussy Pounder. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you want to do Troy? Librarian and I live at home with my mum. <laughs> do you think that's what it was, though? Do you think he was just trying to live up to his name? Yeah. Yeah. Partly to live up to, along with his friends, Captain Cautious and Miss Knobgobbler. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually like this. I think this is. I, I, I think it's a good story. thing. It's a really good story. Yeah. I think what, what would be brilliant is if the next day all the other MPs turned up to work and just looked up, and at the top of Westminster was a traffic cone. <laughs> <laughs> Just on Big Bear. Do you know the reason that he couldn't actually go into the chambers to vote, right? He was trying to open the door to get away from the bar to go and vote, not realising that it was his own foot that was blocking the door <laughs> from opening. Right. I feel sorry for the people of Kent. There must be some point where they're voting for Mr Reckless. Yeah. And list of all the names, and they get to this <laughs> Mr Reckless, and they go... Oh, it, it can't be. It, it can't. <laughs> this can't possibly backfire. Uh, <laughs> or do you reckon there were signs reckless. everywhere around Kent that said vote reckless and people just turned up like just juggling fire? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Or they, they'd vote by throwing the ballot paper in the air and firing one shot. But <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we've all been drunk at work, haven't we? I remember when I worked on an oil rig in the Mexican Gulf. <laughs> <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask huge suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features Fabio Capella and the England squad <laughs> training before the Slovenia. All right, no hard feelings. Only shagged at her once. Yeah, she's a lovely girl. The tactics, uh, pass to Rooney. Don't let Heskey shoot. And you, you here, you, uh, Sean Wright Phillips. Uh, what are you doing here? I, I pick... I picked World Cut. Right, you go, you lot go and train. I will uh, announce the team 15 seconds before kickoff. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to see if I can get this right this time. So, uh, here we go. All right. Uh, once you. Uh, once you. Once you. you what comes next? Once, once, you, once you. I can't get this. Once you. Once you uh, yeah, don't worry about that, Wayne. Look, I'll tell you what, I'll show you some moves that the girls love. You ready? Look. Look at that. Bring me sunshine. In your small... No, they love that, the girls. Like, I'll tell you what, I could be on that Strictly Come Dancing. Look at that, eh? Hang on, dude, Beck, you stuff that up your jack seat. Hey, I wonder if somebody's burgling the house while I'm here. <laughs> hey, uh, Wayne, how is your uh, anger management going? It's important, uh, I know. Hey, piss off, Fabio. <laughs> Here's another thing I'll tell you the girls. Like, they love a bit of thigh. Do you see that? They love a bit of thigh, the girls. They love it. And, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what... I'll tell you what I'm doing, eh? I'm warming up, but I'll tell you what, it's not for football. No, it's not. I, I can't seem to get... I can't go in the same direction as if... Uh, so, that's right, left, right, right, left. I can't, I can't seem to get it at all. Left, uh, here's another one of girls, lovely, look at that. I'll tell you what I call that. I call that the leg over. Do you like that? I love that, the girls, I love it. Here's another one. Look, I bow before your beauty. The girls love that. How <laughs> come we are so shit? <laughs> What is the coalition planning to do about retirement? They're going to raise the age of, uh, of retirement, which means more old people will need to find jobs, which is tough because this is exactly the moment that they've cancelled last of the summer wine. So there are <laughs> far fewer jobs for pensioners. All those people now are having to work in B&Q advising people on which baths best slide down a hill. <laughs> <laughs> the, logic behind it, though, the logic behind it is that people are living longer. Yes. Right? So people, stuff, yeah. life expectancy is different. But women's life expectancy is still longer than men's. Right? So women die on average about 81. We die at 77. So to be fair, we should retire four years before women. It's interesting to hear exactly half the audience applaud. Uh, <laughs> exactly half the audience nudge the other half of the audience who are applauding and go, oh, I don't know you're <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm retiring now. Uh, it's the only shit in my house, because if I said that to my wife, my life expectancy would be even shorter. <laughs> the, the good news, though, is, is if you're a bloke, though, and you manage to live to age 78, right, you know, look after yourself a bit, that does mean there should be a bit of spare totty kicking around. <laughs> <laughs> What are they going to do in Scotland? Oh, my God, I've got a beautiful image of you, age 78. <laughs> Hello, ladies! <laughs> 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 Would any of you sweet bitches like a Werther's original? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, 
No, no, they can go to the top of the stairs and they can go, oh, oh. Working, man. You don't want to be working when you're 70 years old. No, you're, you're a comedian. You'll all still be working at 70. Yeah. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be in a tuxedo on a cruise liner. Uh, <laughs> Uh, old shaky, that... never blue. Uh, <laughs> why don't the elderly just, you know, refuse to work until they're 70, just go on a strike? Wouldn't that be great? What do we want? I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> when do you want it? Whenever. <laughs> the, problem, the, that this, the life expectancy is going so long at this stage. And for some people, they will... The, the number of people who live to be 100 is going to get more and more and more. Be like, literally tens of thousands of people. They, more it will get to, That's it what it means. Going, oh, it's not just a toffee base thing. <laughs> I was going to make a serious economic argument about how the people who would be taking more, who would spend as long retired as ever than working, back. and you are just somewhere <laughs> in some over 80 disco. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, you look exactly the same. <laughs> now we play around for what on earth. I show the panel a topical image from somewhere in the world and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, teams, what on earth is this? I love YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> If she's going, I'd like to apologise for what my husband is yeah, about yeah. to say to me. <laughs> is she saying, I don't know where I am? And he's saying, don't worry, I am a sat Navajo. <laughs> she, she has done a cheeky little gag there. I'll tell you what, Mil, it's a rare day when you've hid away from a punk. <laughs> Speaking out of the comedy wilderness. Uh, <laughs> is, she, is she saying, um, I, I, I left the hat? And he's thinking, yeah, wait until you found out that two of your swans are missing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's, uh, she's going, I was going to do a joke about Red Indians, but I hear you have reservations. <laughs> <laughs> Is that her being happy with the joke, or are you being happy with the joke about it? That's her. Don't make any sudden movements in their headdress. My husband's short-sighted and he's got a shotgun. She's saying, I know all about battle axes. My son married one. <laughs> oh, come on. They, they turn, they turn fast. They do. Yeah. She's saying, that's nice. I keep my pens in a jam jar. <laughs> Yes, this is the story that the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh have been on an eight-day tour of Canada to celebrate the centenary of the Canadian Navy and to mark Canada Day. That man does not look like a sailor. He looks like he's in a band with the guy who looks like a sailor. <laughs> so, Are we having a loo break, by the way? No, 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 when we move the cameras, not now. Yeah. And we're not having a, no, you may run to the We don't have a loo break. I, can't, I certainly can't run to the loo. OK, so you could slosh your giant... Actually, you know, it's fine, because I've just been... <laughs> Oh, no, do not do the same. You can salvage the thing, but you can't... Oh, do a completely different thing. OK, fine, great. It's always good to edit the show in the middle of it, though, I yeah. find. <laughs> I already know things I drop. Hey, uh, sorry, you know the biggest thing? <laughs> what, what is it? No, because I've got it in my hand. Don't you ask, and then I'll go, really? Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got a way to do it. Yeah. Hey, Dora, is that a Vuvuzela in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? <laughs> mm. So what happened to the BPO I leaked this week? It what happened to it? I'm just I'm retaking the question. I, I know what you're doing. I know you've been in I'm the answering it for humorous effect. Yeah. <laughs> it either is this your first right, day? You, both, you can answer it if you want. I'll yeah, ask again. No, you see that you can well, get it. Now it's just me and you. I probably still can't get a word in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this game involves Milton, Andy, and Diane. So you can make your way to the performance area, please, without <laughs> kicking the shit out of the set. <laughs> Oh, Fuck go. off off the face. Go. Well, that's a minute of the DVD sorted yeah. out. <laughs> that moment seemed a bit too hot for TV, yeah. <laughs> How has Manson been promoting the serialisation in the Times of his new book? He's been on Jonathan Ross. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. And this, is not, this is not Kane. Stop. He's you on Jonathan did... Ross with a new act called that. One Puff and a Memo. And that is... <laughs> and that is... <laughs> Dear BBC, I'm writing to complain about the coverage of Indian... <laughs> Beloved, it's happening here. <laughs> I'd just like to second what he said. <laughs> Does anyone see Mongrels? <laughs> right, this Mongrels, if you don't know, it's like this puppet Sorry, show on BBC this. Three, and they were... I was watching I'm it the other day, <laughs> and one of the cats got hit by a frying pan <laughs> and got a lazy eye, and the other cat said to that cat, what in the name of Russell Howard has happened to your face? <laughs> I sort of sat at home going, shit, you know. My genetic defects become a punchline. <laughs> Next up, because things you won't hear in a gardening programme. I think the, uh, the caption might be wrong for that That's one. absolutely right. Sorry. <laughs> I'd like back. to complain to my TV channel about <laughs> the caption. 
I don't want to leave because I might not get back again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's like when you're new anyway, you just get fucked <laughs> over, really. <laughs> <laughs> Which pundit has managed to have a 100% success rate? Paul the Octopus. Is he your friend? <laughs> yeah. happens, you want. I don't think I have any. I don't think, unless another octopus story appears in the news. I'm not sure what use it would be to have a plastic octopus. You could put him on your face and pretend to be part of Doctor Who. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Be, there'd be more. It's, yeah, it's alien. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. We were talking about pranks earlier. That would be a good one to that find. That would be a good your, prank, wouldn't it? Yeah. it to your face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not where you've got it at the moment. No, no, that's <laughs> not <laughs> It'd be a hell of a card piece, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like, you can't see it. That's it. That's right there. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely letters to television channels. Dear Channel 5, your recent documentary on dyslexia was insightful and sensitive. Please show the boy was shit for brains again. <laughs> As a terrorist, I've been watching <laughs> Countdown with interest. <laughs> it is rubbish. Nothing happens. <laughs> Dear News 24, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Babe Station, have you actually read the trace description there? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Bravo, I don't quite know how to put this, but uh, well done. <laughs> Channel 5, isn't it time you just called it a day? <laughs> no one will mourn. <laughs> I'm writing to thank you. On Sunday afternoon, while I was watching television with my wife, I was urged to press the red button. I did, and my wife had her first orgasm in 40 years. <laughs> Dear Al Jazeera, please bring back your hit sitcom, Men Behaving Bad Badly. <laughs> History Channel. The Nazis were bad. We get it. <laughs> Dear Hallmark, roses are red, violets are blue, your cards are shit and your channel is too. <laughs> Dear Channel 4, why don't you pricks book me for any of your shows? <laughs> Dear Sky Sports minus one. <laughs> Thank you for showing the Grand National. I won £100,000. <laughs> Dear Point of View, who should I complain to if I think Point of View is shit? <laughs> Dear Fiverr, if I give you a tenner, will you please stop broadcasting? <laughs> Dear Channel 4, why not liven up Deal or No Deal by putting a nail bomb in one of the boxes? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you don't want to hear in hospital. I'm afraid it's the big C. It fell off the sign at Curry's and hit your wife on the head. Um, whose penis is this? <laughs> Come on, push! Push! We've got no staff and the bed needs moving! <laughs> <coughs> so, just checking your notes here, uh, your Mrs A. Oh, I'm sorry, you've got MRSA. <laughs> You have a cute angina, and your tits aren't bad either. <laughs> and if you don't want to know the results of your tests, look away now. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tell you something funny about Dr Thomas. In his handwriting, the words tonsils and genitals <laughs> look exactly the same. <laughs> We're going to put you to sleep now, because you're old and it's the kindest thing to do. <laughs> So, uh, talk me through it again, Mrs Hopkins. You were having Sunday dinner, and you said to your husband, will you carve? And he just lay down on the floor and gave birth to a baby cow. <laughs> of course it's upsetting, but, you know, Hitler only had one ball, and look how well he did. <laughs> This is Hospital Radio, I'm Chris Moyles, and I'll be with you for the next 14 hours. <laughs> Accept this sacrifice, almighty Satan! I don't like the look of the charts, Mr Wilkins. Dizzy rascal at number one. <laughs> How many fingers? That's right, two. Fuck off. Oh, it.
Ja, hoor. Ja, ja. 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 Ja, ja.